In this episode of Restore It, and from now on, I'm going to focus on a single topic for each episode of this series. And in this one, I'm going to finish my half of the paint preparation before I hand it over to the painters to do the rest, later in the series. I'm also going to remove the windscreen, prep the inside of the car, and attempt to remove two dents on the rear quarter panels. Because I don't want the painter to waste his time correcting my amateur prep, I'm going to leave things like the filler, final primer, and final sanding to him, because like they say, it's all in the prep. So what I'm going to do is remove all of the zinc rich primer that's currently protecting all of the repairs, but cannot be sprayed over, and replace it with epoxy primer that will seal in the bare metal and add a lot of protection to that bare metal and anywhere it's applied. Before I get to that, I'm going to remove some surface rust on the bonnet that's come back as a result of not being protected with anything, and also remove a few more stone chips that I've come across since I first keyed it. So the one thing I didn't think about when I applied all of this zinc rich primer that cannot be sprayed over and must be removed before I even think about it, is how to remove it. At first I tried a soft wire wheel, which was slow and left some behind. I then tried sanding it off, which worked better, but it was a lot of effort as most of the spots had to be done by hand. But thankfully I found out that Thinners does the job incredibly well and takes a fraction of the time, especially with a scotch bright pad. So I'm going around the entire top section of the car with a brush and a pad to remove any trace of zinc rich primer. All of the primer on the rear side of these repairs will be left for when I start work on the underside of the car. Once it's been removed, this is what I'm left with. Bare metal patches from when I ground the surface rust off, and patches of primer and e-coating from when I flattened the paint with sanding pads. All of these areas can now be properly protected with epoxy primer. Before I do that, I need to do the same to the repairs on the interior, which are still being protected with zinc primer. This includes the 8 repairs from the right side footwell and about 20 spots that were ground down to remove surface rust. As you can see, the left side footwell still needs to be repaired, but I'm going to leave that for the weldathon episode I'll be posting soon. In that episode, the rest of the welding will be finished all in one go, which is what I should have done from the start. So with all of the zinc primer removed from the inside, I can now protect all of the bare metal with the good stuff. But first, the news. A common misconception is that the E30's engine is virtually indestructible. And while it's true, this model is built to last, you can't trust just anything you read online. Like any car, the E30 is not immune to wear and tear, and neglect can lead to serious problems. So finding a trusted source of information is crucial for anything from knowing how to properly take care of your car to understanding the world we're living in. That's why I've been using Ground News. They're an app and a website that gathers related news in one place and adds important context that can influence how an outlet might frame the facts. Because the fact is, all the information we read online is full of bias, fueled by financial incentives, and keeps us in a filter bubble. So the cool thing about Ground News is for every story you read on there, you'll get a quick summary based on all of the articles they found reporting on it, plus data on each outlet's political bias and credibility. Context that helps me critically think about why. For example, The Sun is reporting how unnerving it is to see BMW use humanoids in production for the first time, while Automotive Dive is focusing on how using these robots could improve safety in manufacturing operations. When you can easily see the different perspectives and discrepancies in reporting, you can understand the bigger picture and objectively make up your own mind on how you feel about it. So I can't recommend enough that you go to groundnews.com restore or scan my QR code to check them out. Restore It viewers get 40% off the same unlimited vantage plan I've been using to stay fully informed on everything from cars to technology. Thanks to Ground News for sponsoring this episode, let's get back to the touring. As to not fill the entire interior in epoxy overspray, I'm going to brush it on instead of spraying it. I am going to spray the exterior, but the interior and most of the workshop will be masked off by then. And there we go, apart from the bodywork colour with no clear coat, that's all of those repairs properly sealed up and protected. I am tempted to coat the rest of the front and rear footwells like this. What do you guys think? Although I haven't finished with this, I'm going to protect this side for now, and if I end up welding part of it, I'll remove the epoxy around the repair and add it straight back once I'm done. So that's the interior done. Now I can mask the car from the inside so I can paint the exterior. Much like keying the paint, this is a long old job, so I'm just going to show you the satisfying part.
As I've just run out of 2 inch masking tape and some bodywork glue I've been waiting for has just arrived, I'm going to leave the masking there for a moment and attempt to remove these small dents on the rear quarters. I've never tried this before and to prove it, here's me using regular hot glue which really wasn't up for the job. Thankfully after a quick google I found out these specifically designed bodywork hot glue sticks exist. These sticks have very strong adhesion and low melting point which apparently makes them perfect for panel dent repair. The first thing I've noticed is that I think the most important thing is making sure the glue is hot enough and that you give it enough time to fully cool down and harden. As you can see the glue is now clearly much hotter than it was when I first started and it's working much better. I think I could have done it in less goes if all of them were this hot and left for long enough. These vinyl ones are really pulling it back into shape. It's actually looking way better than I was expecting it to. The damage that is still there is from the finger sander, which has left a slight indent, but what I think I'm going to do is see how well the epoxy primer feels that and once it's been sanded down, I think it'll only need a smear of filler to finish it off, although I will be leaving that decision for the painter. It's hard to show on camera but this feels almost perfect, so much better than it was before. With that one done I'm going to give the second one a go taking what I've learnt from the first. It's quite difficult to catch this on camera but if I use the natural light and put you guys on the other side you can just about see what's going on. I wouldn't make a very good paintless dent repairer as I've nicked the paint several times while scraping the glue off, but thankfully I can just sand it all back and add epoxy primer over the top. It's really hard to show you, especially now that it's been sanded down, but this one has really come out nicely. I think there's the smallest little ding where the dent used to be and again I'm going to leave this for the painter to finish. But I must say I'm really impressed with this little dent puller that I got from Amazon. Before I get back to the masking I need to remove the windscreen. I've been putting this off because it's not fun but I've just got to crack on without cracking it. Firstly I need to remove the clip and the middle strip that keeps everything in place. With that gone I can now loosen the seal around the glass and begin to lift it up and forward out of the frame. It's getting a bit stuck at the bottom so I've used a bit of grease to help it on its way. That did however make my hands a little bit slippery which isn't good for handling glass. This is definitely much safer with two people as you watch me almost make a very expensive mistake. With the glass gone I can now remove the seal from the frame. Although I did almost smash it right at the end there, that was actually way easier than I remember it being. It's a 10-15 to 15 minute job at most, well worth doing yourself, albeit with a helping hand. With the screen and seal out of the way, I can give the frame a proper clean and remove the sealant at the bottom to see if there's any rust hiding underneath. Does anyone know why they put this sealant in plastic wrap at the bottom corners of the windscreen? Why not all the way round, or at least at the top as well? I just don't get it. There is a little bit of surface rust on the edge of where that sealant was sitting, but thankfully that's it. This will be easy to remove with the finger sander and will then be sealed with epoxy primer shortly after. To get the window frame ready for epoxy, I need to sand it down with soft sanding pads to key the good paint and remove the rust completely with the sander. With all of the rust gone and the frame now ready for paint, I can give the area a good clean and continue masking the car.
Annoyingly, I knocked the camera on this last shot, ruining this entire episode. Anyway, as I was just looking over the car, I realised that I haven't yet prepared the roof like I have the rest of the car. I'm quickly going over all of the spots of surface rust and any imperfections I find with the finger sander and then the DA. With that done, I can now clean the body down in preparation for the epoxy. I'm using quartz silicone remover to make sure the panels are absolutely clean and ready for paint. With that done, and a quick tack cloth that my camera decided not to film, I can finally spray the repairs. I have covered most things in my workshop with plastic, but I'm still keeping the air and flow rate right down to minimise overspray. And that's the bonnet done, onto the right side door jams. I'm starting to realise that I might as well do the whole door jam as a good portion of it is now in bare metal in one spot or another. This goes for all of them. I'll leave this side partly done for now and move on to the rear of the car. So I'm definitely starting to get carried away. I've decided to do the entire rear side of the car as it just seems like the right thing to do. The same can now go for the left side door jams. And with those fully coated, I might as well do all of the window frame and the apron as well. Up next is the roof and inside the sunroof. And to finish it off, I'm fully coating the right side door jams as well. And there we go, that's my side of the paint preparation finished. You won't see any more on this topic until it's at the painters, ready for the full respray. I do kind of regret using the zinc primer as temporary protection, as it was a lot of work to remove it. I think in the future I'll go straight to epoxy primer once the repair is finished. The two dents are now small dings that will most likely be finished with filler by the painter, and I think not too bad for a first try if I do say so myself. But to be fair, most of the work was done by that cheap dent puller from Amazon. I was pretty impressed with how they turned out considering how small the dents were. So although the top part of the car is rust free and ready to go, the bottom section still needs some welding so I'm going to tackle the rest of it in a single episode so we can quickly move on to things like the front seat retrim, the headliner retrim and the underside overhaul. And don't forget, you could win this exact E30 Touring or a cash alternative prize as soon as it's finished, as I'm going to be running a competition at raffle.com forward slash restore underscore it. In fact, that raffle will be starting very soon and will run until the car is finished in a few months time. So head over to raffle.com forward slash restore underscore it and follow me there so you know as soon as it's live. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.